Good morning everyone and welcome to Elfley Baptist Church for our stream communion service. If you've forgotten it was communion this week, you can hit the pause button and go and get some bread and wine or join us later on in the service for the Lord's Supper. Our call to worship. Come and worship, all you who love and serve the Lord. Outsiders and insiders, old timers and newcomers, the young, the old and the in-between. Come as you are, for this is God's house, a house of prayer for all people, and God welcomes each and every one of you who comes. Now we don't always see God beside us all the time, but he's always there. Let's start our worship by singing the hymn of praise to that effect. Let's sing Immortal, Invisible, God Only Wise. Tuesday saw the funeral of John Morgan Wynne, our former pastor. The church was well attended for a service that was conducted by the Episcopal Scottish uh, Bishop for Argyll and the Isles, Keith Riglin, who was a former uh, student and friend of John's. Our thanks go out to everyone who was involved in organising the service at the church on Tuesday and our thoughts continue to be with Enid and the family at this time.
Back to our briefing. We've decided to continue this year with our Christmas lunch, which we've done in uh, several other years in the past. We took a, a year off last year because of COVID. But really our Christmas lunch is designed for people who would normally be on their own at Christmas, either no family, no relatives, or they can't get to family or relatives. There's no cost for the meal. It is on Christmas Day and it will be in, uh, probably about two o'clock. We haven't set the actual time yet. But if anyone's interested, please just drop me an email, text message or, or a face uh, Facebook post just saying how many places you like or giving a contact uh, number and I'll get in touch with you. Now behind me, you will see we've still got our shoe boxes. And we launched our shoe box appeal last week and we had 23 shoe boxes taken away for people to fill up. Uh, we've also had a donation so far of two online boxes, so that makes a total of 25. Sounds good, but that would be the lowest that we've ever had at this church. So if any of you are interested in either getting a physical box to fill uh, or um, filling a box remotely by paying the sum of £20 to Samaritan's person and doing it online, you'll find details of how to do that on the church Facebook page. Now, we've not had an update for a little while from Mark and Andrea, who are our two um, supported missionaries uh, out in Chad. They work for the Baptist Missionary Society and they are both hospital workers in Bardai in Chad. Here's their latest update. You may remember a while back that Mark and Andrea and Chad were desperate for oxygen for their hospital patients. Two weeks later, the five oxygen concentrators that generate oxygen that they mentioned previously arrived in Bardai. A trip of 1,740 kilometres over four days to get them there, travelling across the Sahel, the Sahara Desert and finally the Tibesti Mountains. The hospital director's land cruiser was heavily loaded with useful supplies from the Ministry of Health, the World Health Organization, UNICEF and from the Turkish government. Mark and Andrea say they have received disposable gowns, gloves, masks, infrared thermometers, pulse oximeters and glucometers. Those were much needed supplies to treat COVID but they still have no vaccines at all to prevent COVID. If they were there, they would have been sent and the COVID fridge is still empty. There are simply just enough, not enough vaccines in the world. The government of the UK, along with other rich countries, is still lobbying alongside the pharmaceutical giants against an intellectual property waiver at the World Trade Organization. That means the poorer countries cannot manufacture their own vaccines. Where you live should not decide whether you live or whether you die. Mark says, will you take a stand along with the majority of the world's nations and the World Health Organization in advocating for open access to vaccine technologies and patents through a waiver allowing production of much more vaccine for all the people of the world? Please join us in our prayers of intercession. Our prayers of intercession for others is not always about asking for stuff. Sometimes we give thanks for the gifts that we have received. Let us pray. Lord, we've heard from Mark and Andrea that they have had a rainy season and we give thanks for the water that you have supplied. Lord, we give you thanks for the arrival of a supply of free medicines and the organisation of a pharmacy order by their administrator at Endojima in Chad. We give thanks that their house is now fully repaired. And we give thanks for the new analysis machine which helps to identify HIV and COVID and TB amongst their patients. Almighty God, we thank you that your written word continues to inspire us, showing us who you are 
how you love us and how we should live. Thank you too for the way in which the Bible brings guidance, hope and health to people everywhere. We pray for the work of BMS, especially the work of Mark and Andrea and Chad. We ask for your blessing on the work that they do and hope that progress is made on the fair distribution of vaccines. We add their prayer requests to our intercessions as they pray for the town supply of water to start functioning well. To ask for regular replenishing rains. That the nurses develop the enthusiasm and interest to provide good care. And we ask for continued development of the relationship with the director and the area health director who have been away at meetings regularly. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Faithful God, we pray for Christians throughout the world and particularly for those who are persecuted because of their faith in you. We continue to pray for the victims of the kidnappings in Haiti. We ask for your protection for them and strength and guidance for all individuals and organisations that seek to help them. We also ask for your guidance on all that we do in our churches to ensure that we serve the local community in the way that you want us to do. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Creator God, we thank you that you care for the entire world and all its people. And we pray for all countries that are torn apart by conflict, illness and hunger. We especially pray for all migrants and refugees among the world and ask that they meet kindness and generosity in their search for a new home. We give you thanks for the positive responses from many countries and pray that this welcome will be extended by many more. We pray for the leaders of all nations, that they would strive for justice and peace for all the people. And in a moment of silence, please pray for any country that is on your mind today. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Loving God, we pray for our local community. Please show us how we can best serve people who are struggling in any way. We pray for all organisations that are starting to meet again following the COVID pandemic. We pray for all children, teachers and staff at schools and ask that they will be refreshed by the half-term holiday. In a moment of silence, please pray for any aspect of life in our local community that is on your mind today. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Gracious God, we pray for the sick, the lonely and the hurting in our community and all who care for them. Help them to keep their eyes fixed on you and give them the courage to face the trials and temptations that may come. Bring healing and comfort for people around the world suffering from the short and the long term effects of COVID. Lord, speed the recovery and slow the spread of the virus. We thank you for the efforts of all those involved in treating, testing and caring for patients. And we ask for your protection over them as they go about their work. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. 
And loving God, we pray for those who have died, either recently or at this time of year. We ask for your comfort for all who mourn. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Almighty God, we ask you to be with us in all that we do throughout the coming week, that we may be serving you by serving other people. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our risen Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. Let's continue worship with singing in our next hymn. Be still for the presence of the Lord. Our scripture passage for today comes from Mark's Gospel, Mark chapter 10, and it's verses 45 to 52, and I'm going to be reading from the New International Version. Then they came to Jericho. As Jesus and his disciples, together with a large crowd, were leaving the city, a blind man called Bartimaeus, which means son of Timaeus, was sitting by the roadside begging. When he heard that it was Jesus of Nazareth, he began to shout, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. Many rebuked him and told him to be quiet, but he shouted all the more, Son of David, have mercy on me. Jesus stopped and said, Call him. So they called to the blind man, Cheer up, on your feet, he's calling you. Throwing his cloak aside, he jumped to his feet and he came to Jesus. What do you want me to do for you? Jesus asked him. 
The blind man said, Rabbi, I want to see. Go, said Jesus, your faith has healed you. And immediately he received his sight and followed Jesus along the road. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. And they came to Jericho. And as he went out of Jericho with his disciples and a great number of people, blind Bartimaeus, the son of Timaeus, sat by the highway side begging. That's how our scripture passage started. Jericho, which was also called the City of Palms, was located just a few miles from the Jordan River. I've been there. It's now a tourist destination in Israel. The Lord and his disciples had crossed the Jordan, not in a bus as we did, but on foot and came to Jericho. There he met blind Bartimaeus, a man with a desperate need. It was desperate because blind men were not able to work and usually made their living just by begging. And Bartimaeus had staked out a good site of the main road to Jericho. We're not told how the blind man came to know that Jesus was coming or going to be close by. We can only just speculate on that. Perhaps he heard strangers talking about a previous miracle where Jesus had healed the man who had been born blind. He hoped to see him someday. And his only hope was that Jesus would give him his sight as he had the man who was born blind. And then he may have heard from passers-by that Jesus was near and he might well be heading his way. Bartimaeus somehow recognised Jesus as the Messiah because he addressed him as the son of David. The belief that the Messiah would be a descendant of David was common amongst the Jews of that day. He believed that this could be his only chance to see again. And he was determined to meet the only one that can make him see again. He had to get Jesus' attention, so he yelled as loud as he could, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. It was actually quite ironical that while the nation of Israel was blind to the presence of the Messiah, a blind Jew had true spiritual sight. Many in the crowd, and perhaps even the disciples, we don't know for sure, attempted to keep the blind man from constantly yelling, Son of David, have mercy on me. But their attempts to silence his annoying cry only made him yell louder and louder. The people were not interested in a beggar, but the good news was, Jesus was. When Jesus heard the cry of the blind man, he stopped in the middle of the road and he stood still listening to these cries of mercy. Joshua once ordered the sun to stand still in the heavens, but here the Lord of the sun and the moon and the heavens and the stars stand still at the bidding of a blind beggar. His disciples may have been against him stopping to help such a lowly person, but our Lord perceived the man's need and his faith and commanded them to bring the man to him. They took the man by hand and as they took him to see Jesus, they said, cheer up. Several words in this verse suggest that Bartimaeus responded hurriedly to Jesus' invitation. We're told that he threw off his cloak, jumped up and came to Jesus. This was the opportunity of a lifetime and he would not let it slip away. He persisted with his pleas for mercy and he would not allow them to go unanswered. He was face to face with the one person in the world that could actually make him see again. Jesus asked him what he wanted. And without hesitation or explanation, the beggar replied that he wanted his sight. 
His prayer was short, specific, and actually full of faith. His specific prayer for sight brought a specific answer. In reality, it was the power of God that healed, but the man's faith was the channel by which that strength could actually flow to him. The man's faith was revealed by his persistent eagerness, by him recognising Jesus as the Messiah, and by him calling Jesus Lord. His gratitude was expressed in faithful discipleship and glorifying God as he followed Jesus on his last trip to Jerusalem. It must have cheered the heart of the Lord to find faith like this in Jericho as he moved on towards the cross. It was a good thing that Bartimaeus sought the Lord that day because the Saviour never passed that way again. We may learn from this incident that we should have the courage to believe God is capable of the impossible. Great faith honours him. I finish with a quote from the poet John Newton who wrote, Thou art coming to a king, large petitions with thee bring, for his grace and power are such, none can ever ask too much. Amen. To take us into our time of communion, we've got to sing our next hymn, which is Jesus Christ, I think upon your sacrifice. Jesus Christ, I think upon your sacrifice, you became the today many times I've wondered at your gift of life I'm in that place once again I'm in that place once again and once again I look upon the cross where you died I'm humbled by your mercy and I'm broken inside Once again I thank you Once again I pour out my life Now you are Exalted to the highest place King of the heavens Where one day I'll bow But for now I marvel at your saving grace I'm full of praise once again I'm full of praise once again And once again I look upon the cross where you died I'm humbled by your mercy and I'm broken inside Once again I thank you once again I pour out my life And once again I look upon the cross where you died I'm humbled by your mercy and I'm broken inside Once again I thank you, once again I pour out my life
work upon the cross where you died I'm humbled by your mercy and I'm broken inside Once again I thank you, once again I pour out my life We come to the table of the Lord for communion. Come to this table, not because you must, but because you may. Not because you're strong, but because you're weak. Come not because of any goodness of your own gives you a right to come, but because you need mercy and help. Come because you love the Lord a little, and we'd love to love him more. Come because he loved you and gave himself for you. Come here and meet the risen Christ, for we are his body. The Apostle Paul tells us of the institution of the Lord's Supper. For I received from the Lord what I also handed on to you, that the Lord Jesus, on the night when he was betrayed, took a loaf of bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, This is my body that is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after the supper, he took the cup, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink this wine, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Let us give thanks to the Lord. Loving God, we praise you and thank you for your love shown to us in Jesus Christ. We thank you for his life and his ministry, announcing the good news of your kingdom and demonstrating its power by lifting up the downtrodden, healing the sick, curing the blind and loving the loveless. We thank you for his sacrificial death upon the cross for the redemption of the world and for raising him to life again as a foretaste of the glory that we shall all share. We give you thanks for this bread and wine, symbols of our world and signs of your transforming love. Send your Holy Spirit, we pray, that we may be renewed into the likeness of Jesus Christ and formed into his body. We now share the Lord's Supper. As Jesus said, this is my body which is for you. Do this in memory of me. In the same way, he took the cup after the supper and said, This cup is the new covenant sealed by my blood. Whenever you drink it, do this in memory of me. Your death, O Lord, we commemorate. Your resurrection we confess. Your final coming we await. Glory be to you, O Christ. Amen. Father of all, we give you thanks and praise. 
that when we were still far off, you met us in your Son and brought us home. Dying and living, he declared your love, gave us grace and opened the gate of glory. May we who share Christ's body live his ridden, risen life. We who drink his cup bring life to others. We whom the Spirit lights give light to the world. Keep us firm in the hope you have set before us, so we and all your children shall be free, and the whole earth live to praise your name, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Let's continue our worship with singing our next hymn, Here is Love, Vast as the Ocean. Please join me in prayer. Let us pray. O Jesus Christ, teacher and healer, you heard the cry of a blind beggar when others would have silenced him. Teach us to be attentive to the voices others ignore, that we might respond through the power of the Spirit, to heal the afflicted, to welcome the abandoned, all for your sake and for the sake of the gospel. And Lord, hear us now as we join together to say the words that you taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. 
Our closing hymn for today is a modern song. It's called, What a Beautiful Name It Is. Let us close our worship today by sharing the words of the grace. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore. Amen. <laughs>